So I guarantee that there's quite a few uh, gamers out there watching this that like to go back to the classics every once in a while to put down the Switch, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, maybe even the PC, maybe go back to the PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, the, the N64 if, if you're so inclined. Um, and that's all good. Retro gaming is bigger than ever. Uh, there are more ways to get your old school gaming on, whether that's from officially released classic systems that are released by Nintendo, uh, PlayStation and, and Sega are about to release another Mega Drive version. Whether it's emulation, which is uh, not so quite legal, but hey, everyone seems to do it. And whether it's unofficial clone systems that come out every once in a while. So there's tons of ways to get your old school gaming on. But what if you want to go back to an original system like this one, what if you want to go back and you don't have a big bulky CRT television to play with and you've got your, your massive 4K 55 inch television, you want to get some Nintendo 64 time on it, but you can't because, oh crap, there's no SCART cable there's the connection, there's no, there's no um, video cable connection to put your red, white and yellow cables in, you've got no means of connecting your beloved N64 to your television and you think you're absolutely screwed. Well, my friend, there are many ways of fixing this issue, but Eon Gaming have just released the Super 64, which may well be a solution that may fit your exact uh, requirements, if you will. So we're going to give this little dongle a go, and I'm going to show you exactly how it works and how easy and how quickly you could be playing uh, your old Nintendo 64 on your modern television as quickly as that. So how easy is the Super 64 to use? Well, it's pretty easy. You take your Eon Gaming Super 64 unit, this nice little steady dongle here. You take your Nintendo 64 system. It has to be a, a Japanese or American model. This does not work with European models at the moment, but there will be an alternative version coming out for, for fellow European gamers. But if you have a Nintendo 64 from America or Japan, then well, all you need to do is take this thing, slot it in here, and that's it. You, there's a little HDMI connection there. You just take your HDMI cable and plug it in, and that's it. And you plug it into the power, and then you switch it on, and it just works. What more could you possibly want from that? So let's manage your expectations right off the bat. So there is nothing the Super 64 is going to do to suddenly make your Nintendo 64 console look bright and beautiful and in clear HD on your new television screen. It's, it's not meant to do that uh, and there's no way of it being able to do that unless you modify your Nintendo 64 console in some way, which is totally the opposite of what the Super 64 is trying to do. What it's trying to do at its core is basically give you a very simple way of plugging your old uh, Nintendo 64 console um, from 20 years plus ago to your new monitor in the simplest way as possible and it does that. It really does do that. It's literally, as you've seen from the video, you, you know, you plug this in uh, and it just works um, and whether that's plugging it into a, a a uh, television or whether that's plugging it into a capture device it just works it doesn't do particularly much with the signal other than sort of standardizing the 240p and 480i uh, resolution to a more common 480p signal that most displays should be able to support although you may find some that struggle slightly with that but in any case you know that sort of bare minimum uh, resolution that most televisions support now and the same goes for capture cards as well it doesn't do any sort of upscaling beyond that um, and it's absolutely fine as long as you realize that it's not gonna uh, suddenly make things amazingly um, sharp overnight now i'm not saying there aren't ways to get an even better picture out of a nintendo 64 but as mentioned that does require some modification to your system and in many cases also some external upscaling hardware um, which you know will, will probably end up costing you many more hundreds or hundreds of pounds or dollars um, than this little device does. So if you've got a, uh, a multi-console, a multi-retro console setup at home, um, then maybe you might want to look into doing some sort of upscaling uh, unit setup with an OSSC or a Frame Master or something like that. But if you've just got a, uh, a Nintendo 64 console and you just want to play that and you just want a no fuss method, then this is definitely the way forward. Uh, basically, it uses the uh, the S video output from the uh, Japanese and American consoles and basically upscales that and gives you a relatively uh, a much better uh, type of signal and, and, and quality than you would get from trying to plug in your your composite uh, red, yellow, and white cable straight into a television. It will look better than that. 
it won't be perfect um, and as you'll see from this video there it's, it's not pixel sharp even by Nintendo 64 standards but it's a pretty decent signal considering it's you know it's very old analog technology and um, the Nintendo 64 is well known for having a very blurred effect um, and that is because it really did utilize a whole lot of anti-aliasing and what that does is just a little filter that um, sort of hides the jagged effect of uh, polygons and objects uh, and that is really what the Nintendo 64 was known for. Now there are other ways of getting rid of that effect completely but again that requires various different parts of modification um, but this is just a, a standard plug and play and to be honest for what it is it looks pretty damn good um I, admittedly i am running a a better uh, setup um, i'm using rgb scart cables into proper upscalers and um, which does look better than this but you know again i spent more money on that than i spent on this little device um and it what this does it does very very well and if you look carefully on the device there is a, a tiny little button right here if you give this button a press while you've got your nintendo 64 uh, turned on and this eon device plugged in then what this will do this will activate the slick mode so what slick mode does is add its own sort of uh, filter on top of uh, the output of the super 64 and what that does is it sort of uh, it's like a, almost like a very subtle blur filter and it just sort of tidies up some of any sort of jagged pixelation that you get from the system and so really what you've got is you've got a a console output that's already quite blurry and you're sort of adding another blur over it uh, which might look a bit better on on larger television screens it's, it's, it's one of those sort of subjective things um, it's it, it's you know it's a nice feature to have um, you might love this effect um, and you might like that sort of filter over it just to sort of hide some of the blemishes on that picture me personally I kind of like the pixelated look I'd get rid of all of the uh, the anti aliasing and all the blur effects and just get that sort of sharp look if I could um, but yeah, it, it's a nice feature it's not really you know adding anything amazing I don't think it's quite as uh, as good as it's hyped up to be but again it's subjective you might be looking um, at you know the uh, the images with the slick mode on you might love it and you might think that's perfect but it's not really for me um, and, and uh, you know that's that that's all fine it's all good it's, it's another option and another string to its bow i thought it's a really pretty good device so to give you a better idea of where the super 64 stands in terms of image quality what you're seeing now is, uh, is some composites footage from the nintendo 64 and but by composite it's the uh, the red yellow and white cables that you sometimes see that you used to connect retro consoles to when we move over to the super 64 output um, that's much better it's instantly clear to see that it's a much better way of connecting to it that's because it's using that s video output and um, which is much better quality um, than any sort of composite image you can get without getting too technical so moving on from the super 64 and the s video quality you can move on to um, another way of connecting your nintendo 64 to a television but it does require modifying your system uh, and that's using an rgb scott uh, output and um, which is actually better than s video um, but it does require modifying your system and in the case of me capturing this footage it also requires me using some expensive upscaling unit um, now again it's, it's it's quite expensive if you're just doing it for the one console but this is just to sort of show you what the Nintendo 64 can look like if you put a bit of money and effort into it there are other options it's just, it's just a case of looking at what's out there knowing what those options are and what works best for your setup personally the Super 64 isn't for me but um, I can see a lot of people being very happy with the quality they get. If you're just a casual retro gamer and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, this is just a really nice solution to just get what you want, and that is to get your Nintendo 64 working on your television. You know, if that is what you want, then I don't think you'll be unhappy with what you get from the Super 64. So hopefully you know how the Super 64 works and you can see how it can give you a no fuss solution for getting your old Nintendo 64 system working with a modern display or, or your television. And now if you don't mind me, I've got a score to settle in WWF No Mercy.